So tonight we're going to paint this painting from start to finish extremely quickly because I don't have much time. If you're enjoying these videos then please press like and press the subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. And also if you want to know more about how to paint like this then you can join me on Patreon. There's heaps of lessons on there and I give you guys as much help as I can on there as well. So yes, check that out in the link somewhere above my head. All right, so we better get painting. I don't have much time. I'm painting this and uploading it tonight. So I'll see you in there. Ooh, possum. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm gonna to paint a scene from Watamola, which is a place that's close to our home here. It's a gorgeous part of the world. It's in the Royal National Park. I'm gonna paint this tonight, but it's now 6.37, and I've gotta publish this for you guys at 10 p.m. tonight, so I better get a rig on, I gotta paint this, and then upload it, then edit it, and then you know get it onto YouTube, and so I better be fast. No time to muck around tonight, that's for sure. So, I haven't all, even mixed all my paints yet, but we'll just, we'll just get started. If you have a look at this view of Watermola, it's what you see when you walk down into this beautiful little area has a little freshwater sort of river running into the, the ocean. And, but the colour of the ocean as you walk down there is, is just gorgeous. So, yeah, I'm going to see how we go with this, doing this fairly abstract. Yeah, I might just wet the whole thing. I just like it when the paper's wet. Like I could, of course, do the, the first part with the dry, with the paper dry, but you just don't get as much exciting things happening on the page. So, you know, that's why it's just nice to wet it. Even if you end up controlling the movement of the watercolor so that it doesn't quite go everywhere. Still a nice thing to have it wet. So I'm just going to come in with the sky first. I'm going to start from the top. And we'll just bring in a bit of cerulean blue, but the problem is I haven't mixed my paints. And cerulean blue, I sprayed some water in, but cerulean blue, cerulean blue is a bit, um, a bit hydrophobic. Like it doesn't seem to love water. So when you're, you know, I should really have mixed it up with my mixing brush before starting. So yeah, if we have a look at that photo, we'll just we'll just come in with some random. Marks, we'll leave a little bit of bits for the white bits. Come in here like this. Beautiful. That's that done. We could just probably spray that out. Not waste our cerulean blue to spray it out into the... Because we're not going to use that again, so it doesn't matter if I make that mix pretty weak. Cobalt blue and raw umber. See if we can't get that interesting green. It's an interesting colour. A little bit of Winsy Yellow. So we've got a little bit of raw umber, a bit of cobalt blue, a bit of Winsy Yellow. Let's see how we go. Getting a bit of an interesting green and we might have to get a few interesting highlights because that's a little bit drab. Right, so we're just going to bring this in and this. So I probably could have, I could have done a little bit of sketching, like a little bit of just give me an idea of where this water is. And that's it. That'll, that's all I need really is just where is this water line. So we'll just bring this in here. It's a pretty drab colour but you know Australian greens <laughs> a bit notorious for being a little bit sort of just dark I suppose. Let's just grab a bit of Just going to charge a few areas with a bit of a brighter green, which is a mix of um, cobalt turquoise light and um, Windsor yellow. Just going to get a little bit of that light green that's in those valley areas off there. I'm going to darken this off and just bring this in. So I'm using the Windsor blue red shade light red mix just create a dark 
hier. Bring in this water, it's just gorgeous. Just gonna use my round sable to just lift out some lights. could come in and just dab with a tissue a bit and it might be more likely to just keep some bits of those quite bright rather than the water just seeping back in even though it's pretty wet. Just going to darken this off even more. Just darken it off. Going to bring in a few of these greens now. first layer. I think I might just dry it now. Just using a rigger brush at the moment to just put in a little bit of detail to a few leaves. I'm just sort of catching the light out on these bits compared to the dark bits and I might lift out some lights in the out of the dark bits in a bit when it's dry. And probably what I should do before I dry it is just uh, is just step back 
and have a bit of a look at you know what this actually looks like <laughs> apart from being a mess like what does it actually look like and not necessarily compared to the photo but just how does it look and how does it like work does it work at all or is it a complete mess and that's hard to tell until I look back, hold it up and step back from a distance. And it's probably hard for you guys to tell too because you this painting fills the whole screen so it's not like you guys have much ability to sort of step back and have a look. So let's just do that, let's I'll hold this up, I'll step back, have a look. So I'm quite liking this. The one bit that I sort of would like a little bit more, uh, a bit more detail on these leaves here. I'm just using the rigger brush to bring in some branches, some finer details of the leaves, but Again, I'm not trying to paint each leaf at all. I'm just trying to look at the sort of the shape that those multiple leaves make. And then I'm just trying to make that very quickly with the rigger brush. And obviously as this dries, I'll be able to put in more and more uh, detail if I chose to. Although what I might do is I might keep some of this blurry because where I want the eyes to be going is here. So this is where I might just have a bit of detail, just here. just sketching out this trunk a bit so where it's here where it comes kind of past here I can just uh, lift out some lights a bit just to give it a little bit more definition I just use a spray bottle a bit to just spray some of these areas. And then I can side where I come in and, and just lift out some lights a bit. I can come back in and put some more darks in a bit later, but if I want to have some interesting, and it's good to look off to the side a bit and see. Spray that a bit, just to soften that. And again, we might just, even that's not what's in the photo, we might just bring in a bit more dark. to just highlight so 
I'm just kind of trying to create some bodies of tone. So instead of having too much detail, I'm just trying to not make it so that the eye is just sucked into that level of detail too much. And one thing I could have practiced before doing this painting is just like, you know, really quick marks that just emulated the leaves on these trees that are there. So that if I wanted some detail, I could do it very quickly, but, but, but still what, in a way that captured the character of the branches and the leaves. But I'm thinking at the moment what I want is not, is not too much detail. So that the eye is really easily sucked into this area here. That's where I want it. Doesn't mean I can't put a little bit of detail in places, but not too much. Right, let's try this again. So the last thing we need to do really is just create a subject for the eye, which I'm going to do is the, the lights on the edge of the coast where the sea meets the, the rocks. Let's see if we can't just spray a bit in here. Right, let's see what happens here. Whew. Fast possum. <laughs> Not really doing anything. Hmm. Right, I'll just I'll just dry this shoreline and then I'll scratch back then. Right, I think I'm happy with that. I think I really like the tonal values in there and the light that's catching your eye here around the trees. I don't know if I'll come in and do any more detail at any stage. I could make it a bit darker around here. I could, of course, put in some more detail of the branches, but I quite like it being a bit more, bit vague. You know, I quite, I quite like that, all the different tonal values. So. So thanks for joining me tonight. I really hope you enjoyed this sort of, you know, this freestyle uh, go at painting this painting uh, from my little trip down to Guatemala the other day with the kids. 
And this might not look fantastic up close, but I, I you know, can assure you that when you step right back, it, it looks really nice just because of the tonal values. So thanks for joining me tonight. If you like this video, press like, press the subscribe button if you don't want to miss stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed this interesting painting. It doesn't have a lot of detail, but it has different tonal values and that's what gives you that detail as well. So thanks guys, I'll see you next week in next week's video. Yeah, thanks for all your watching and support. I, I, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. All right, see you guys soon. See ya, good night.